So in today's video, we're going to go over some example problems for calculations with Hooke's Law and, of course, the spring constant. And before we do that, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I noticed in my analytics that like more than 90% of the people who watch my videos don't subscribe. Please subscribe. Support my channel, Step-by-Step -step Science Kit, Omics and Physics, Chemistry, and Math videos. You can subscribe, click the notification bell, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and share this video. In addition to that, I have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find on my Teachers Pay Teachers website for Pendulum, Springs, Simple Harmonic Motion, and a bunch of other physics topics. The link is in the description below. And of course, I've already made some other videos for Hooke's Law, Springs, Pendulum, Simple Harmonic Motion. You can link to some of those in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But let's do a quick review of Hooke's Law, then we'll get into some problems. Hooke's Law simply says that Fs is equal to minus Kx. This minus sign simply means that this force is in the opposite direction of this force, Newton's third law, force equal but opposite. Same uh, magnitude, but uh, uh, opposite direction. Okay? Newton's third law. Did I say that? I said that. Okay, what is Fs? Fs is simply the force exerted on the spring, and that is measured in Newtons and capital N for Newtons. K is the spring constant measured in Newtons per meter. X is the change in the length measured in meters, and everything we go over in this video applies to whether the springs are horizontal or vertical. And we could also say that spring law, excuse me, Hooke's law says that it is the force needed to extend or compress a spring is by some distance is directly proportional to that distance. And that means that the force and the distance are directly proportional. And that means if you apply more force, you increase the force, you're going to get a greater change in length. And if you decrease the force, you're going to get a lower change in length because the force and the change in the length compression or a extension are directly proportional to each other. Here is example number one. This just says that we have a force of 2.5 newtons attached to a spring. We get a change in length of 16 centimeters, and we want to know what is the spring constant k of that spring. So we're just calculating the spring constant. We get out our Hooke's Law equation. We solve that for k, and um, that is the force divided by the change in the length. The force we said is 2.5 newtons. The change in the length is 0 0.16 meters. And that means that uh, the spring constant for that spring is 15, not 16, 15.6 newtons per meter. That means we would have to apply 15.6 newtons of force to change the length of that spring by one meter. Usually you don't have a spring that you're going to be changing a whole meter, but uh, maybe let's say it was just 10 centimeters, then you would have to apply a tenth of that force because a 10 centimeters is a tenth of a meter. So that would be 1.56 newtons to change the length of that spring by 10 centimeters. Or if you had a really big spring and you wanted to change it by 2 meters, then you would have to apply 15, 15 is 30, 1.31.2 uh, newtons of force double the amount of force. Okay, now number two, we'll do a little bit more uh, involved problem here. We have a force of, that's going to be applied to a spring of 0 0.75 newtons, and we're going to change the length of 8 centimeters. Once again, of course, we want to know what is the spring constant. We want to know what would be the change in the length if we apply 2.5 newtons of force. What weight will cause that spring to change in length by 90 centimeters, and then what is the mass of that weight using Newton's second law. The first part is the spring constant. We just like we did in the previous slide, we're going to take the spring constant, divide the force that we measured by the change in length that we measured, and that would be 9.4 Newtons per meter. Once again, we would have to apply 9.4 Newtons of force to change the length of that spring by one meter. Now for part B, where it's assuming it's the same or saying it's the same spring, so we're going to need the spring constant again, so I put out it with me here. It says what will be the change in length of this spring uh, in centimeters when uh, 2.25 newtons is attached to it. Okay, so we want to know the change in length k. We're, so, excuse me, we're solving for x this time, which is the force divided by k. And you can see that in, in, it takes 9.4 newtons to change it one meter. Well, 2.25 times 4 is 9, so that's almost a quarter of this value. So if we're going to apply a quarter of the force that is needed to change it by 1 meter, then the change in length should be pretty close to a quarter of a meter. And what do you know? 0.24 meters, 
0.24 meters is 24 centimeters, and that's just about a quarter of a meter. Okay? They're directly proportional, the force and the change and the length. Okay, for letter C, now we have the same spring again, so we have our same spring constant, and now we want to know what weight will cause it to change its uh, length by 90 centimeters. Now, by the weight, we also mean by what force. Okay, what force of gravity, what force is going to have to be applied on to that spring to get it to change by 90 centimeters? Well, it takes 9.4 to change it one meter. This is 90 centimeters. That's pretty close to one meter, so our answer better be relatively close uh, to 9.4 newtons. Okay, so this time we're charged solving for the weight. We're just going to solve for the weight and plug those values in 9.4 times uh, 90 meter, 0.90 meters, 0.9 meters, and if you do that times 0.9, you get a force that you would have to apply to the spring of 8.5 newtons, and that's pretty close to 9.4. That's 90% of 9.4. Okay, that's the weight that you would have to apply. That's also the force that would be applied to the spring because of, we said before, Newton's third law. Those forces are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. Okay, now for letter D, uh, we want to take that force and de determine what's the mass, what would be the mass of the object. Okay, because typically when we have objects, we don't talk about their force directly. We talk about, well, this object has a certain mass. So well, now we're going to use Newton's, Newton's second law, which is F equals ma, but this is for gravity, since it's the gravitational force we're assuming that's pulling the weight down. So it's Fg, the force of gravity, is equal to m times g. The force on the spring is being pulled down by gravity, so these two values are equal to each other. But we're going to be solving for the mass first, so we get the force of gravity divided by g. And if you remember, g is 9.81 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth. So we take 8.5 newtons divided by that, and we get that a force of 8, an object that applies a force of 8.5 newtons would have a mass of 0 0.866 kilograms, which of course, that is 8.6, excuse me, not 8.6, 866 grams. Okay, that's number two, and we have one more problem, number three. It says a spring, uh, has a spring constant, this time we're given the spring constant of 23 newtons per meter, and a mass is hung on it, that spring, and it increases its length by seven centimeters. We wanna know what is the weight of that object. Okay, the weight of that mass. We're going to use um, Hooke's law, and we're looking for the force, the weight. All right, and it's just 23 times 0 0.07. You'll notice it takes 23 newtons to change it one meter. Well, we're only changing it uh, seven centimeters. That's less than a tenth. So this value that we're going to get for the force should be less than a tenth of the amount needed for one newton. And that's what you get is 1.61 newtons. All right. And so it takes, if you apply, if, it, if you only want to change the length a little bit, you have, don't have to apply that much force relative to the spring constant. Okay. And don't forget this is seven centimeters, it's 0 0.07 meters. And now we want to know the mass. So we're going to take that force. And like we did before, we're going to convert it into a mass, which is the force of gravity, which is the same thing as the spring constant, or the same as the force on the spring. It's 1.61 newtons divided by the accelerator due to gravity, and you get 0 0.164 kilograms, which of course is 164 grams. So there you go. We did some very nice examples for calculating the spring constant and Hooke's law. Um, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to do all of the following four things. Once again, you should subscribe to my channel. Okay. And then you should give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and share this video with all of your friends. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.